What's up guys, it's Ambi Zero with your Thursday video. Uh, this is a good one. I've been trying to show you the guys this one for like a week and a half, but you know, only one video a week. It's hard to, uh, hard to wait, but I did it. So, anyway, today we're going to talk about Fire Sheep, uh, a new way of hijacking sessions, a lot like the Man in the Middle attack. Uh, if you click your screen now, you can watch that. Um, however, this one, we don't, you don't have to be as tech savvy to do it. You don't get their passwords, but you do get to hack, uh, accounts again. Um, so, what are we even talking about? I know, I just jumped into it. But, basically, Firesheep is a Firefox plugin that allows us to hijack, uh, sessions by duplicating cookies. What does that even mean? Um, so, let's put it like this. When you check into a hotel, the first time you check in, you have to walk up to the front counter, you have to sign in, you have to pay, you have to do all that type stuff just to get into, uh, the hotel, right? But after that, they give you a room key. And then after that, any time you want to come back into the hotel, you just use your room key. You don't have to go up to the front desk every time. So that's a lot like what happens with a website. The first time you log in and you press Remember Me, and then the uh, website issues you a cookie, which is uh, a lot like a room key. So you don't have to log in every time. You just present your room key and you get right in. So what Firesheep does is when you log into a website and you or you don't really log in you use your cookie to get in um the cookie sent over the wi-fi signal and you can read it in plain text it's very very visible very out there um so what firesheep does is duplicates it just like it makes a second copy of the room key basically um and just grants you instant access it's actually kind of ridiculous um the only way to protect against this is to use like a VPN or totally encrypt the um, information going across an SSL and most websites don't do that because it costs them a little bit of money. Um, but we can take advantage of that. <clears throat> so what you're going to need is first if you're on Windows, which I kind of assume you are, you're going to need WinPCAP. It's just a, a driver used for um, packet sniffing. If you already have like Wireshark or anything like that, can enable, you already have WinPCAP. Don't worry about it. Next, what you're going to need is the Firesheep uh, Firefox plugin, and that's in the description below as well as the WinPCAP. Um, all you're going to need to do is download it and then open the .xpi file with uh, Firefox.exe, and it will automatically install it for you. Uh, and then all we have to do is enable it. So open up Firefox after you've installed it, right click on the menu, and press Customize. Okay, so scroll all the way down, and you should see Firesheep with some type of ridiculous icon, because Firesheep doesn't have an icon, so Firefox automatically assigns it uh, just a preview icon. And then we're just going to change show to text, that way we don't have to look at that ridiculous icon. Okay, so now, press Firesheep, it's probably in your uh, bookmarks menu, that's where I put mine, and you should see this new window. Now, first things first, we have to make sure that it's configured correctly. I know it's a pain. Press Preferences under this little gear icon, and make sure that it's just on your wireless card. Um, if you have more than one, like I do, you're just going to have to figure out what it is. Open up, like, uh, Wireshark or something and see which one's getting most of the traffic. Um, most likely, you guys only have one. And if you don't, normally it automatically uh, picks the right one for you anyway. So it really shouldn't be a problem. Um... If you have more than one, you probably know how to fix it already. So we're going to go ahead and press Start Capturing. Now what we're just going to do is wait for someone to log in. So we're sitting in our local Starbucks, and there's a whole bunch of college students on their Macs uh, writing their screenplays and papers, sipping their coffee with their scarves. Um, you know, stereotypical douche. <laughs> so let's uh, switch over to the other computer on the network, which uh, might be logging into something. Okay, so here's our other computer that's sitting in Starbucks. It's not exactly a Macintosh, but it's still the same point. So they're in there, they're on their public Wi-Fi, and they want to check their Twitter. So they log into Twitter, but they don't really log in. They use that cookie that we were talking about. As you can see, it automatically logged me in uh, because I've already logged in and I pressed Remember Me. So I'm logged in, I didn't have to do anything, which means that my cookie was sent out over the network and free for anyone on my network to uh, read. So let's see what happened. And now if you look in Firesheep, on the left side, we see Amic Zero Twitter. Firesheep has a library of cookies that it's able to read, um, decipher basically, uh, like Facebook, Gmail, uh, what else, Facebook, I think I already said that actually, Twitter, <laughs> um, Flickr, a lot of things. So 
it's already duplicated our cookie. Now all we need to do is double click it and it will set that cookie for us and automatically open the web open up the website. So I'm just gonna double click and there we go. Twitter opened up, uh signed us in. We didn't have to do anything, it just duplicated the cookie. Now this is actually gonna be good for quite a long time. Uh up to a month, up to a year. Um cookies stay around normally for quite a long time. Now you don't really have this person's password per se, but you are able to just access the account uh, as long as the cookie is valid. Um, that can range from, you know, totally different time periods. Uh, normally they last quite a long time, at least longer than a month if it's, uh, you know, something where, unless you change your password, something like that. Um, and it really shouldn't be a problem. So, now you have access to the accounts, you can do whatever you want. Um, it's a pretty scary thing, actually, because now anyone with little to no computer experience can do something like this. Now, this person goes and logs in their Gmail or Flickr or Facebook, you have that too. And it doesn't get cleared from Firesheep, as long as you don't go down here and press clear, it will stay here, just ready for you to double click, and it's ready to go. So, that's something else to think about when on public Wi-Fi. Um, I tell I tell you guys all the time. I did with my uh, man in the middle attack. Public Wi-Fi is terrible, and I would <laughs> I would never log into anything even remotely important on it. Uh, it's really not good. Now, what can you do to protect against something like Fire Sheep? Uh, is to visit SSL encrypted sites such as PayPal. Um, I know the most important one, right? Um, but that can still be an issue with Cane Enable. Uh, it's a little harder when it's SSL encrypted, but it can be a problem. Um, now, like I said, man of the attacks are much more visible, much easier to detect if you know what you're doing on a computer, um, because the ARP tables are spoofed. But with FireSheet, this is virtually undetectable. You can't really tell if anyone's doing this on your network without physically looking at their computer and seeing. Um, so the best way probably to uh, avoid an attack like this is to use a VPN such as Hotspot Shield, um, direct tunneling to uh, a different type of service. I'm not going to go into what it is right now. Hotspot Shield is free, um, and it will protect you against something like this. So if you want to use something like that on public Wi-Fi, then that's what I would suggest. So anyway, now you guys know uh, how to do that. And I'll see you guys next Thursday. Please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll see you next Thursday.